third coast percussion is an extraordinary ensemble of four young musicians of immense vision, skill, uh, expertise. They also compose. Uh, they're really, really big thinkers with incredible technique. So the opportunity to work with them was, for me, a joy that I could hardly begin to express. We've been working on this piece, actually, from our first discussion till today, well, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years, a long, long, long time since we initially dis discussed it. And it's been a great privilege to work with them as collaborators all the way through. We workshopped the piece many times. I can't remember how many, but let's say five times in which we would take a part of what I'd written and play it together and discuss it and then do that again and then do that again. So we've really worked in a very detailed and nuanced and meaningful way. It's not something where I just mailed them the music and then floated in for the last rehearsal. One thing I can say with utmost certainty is this is the hardest piece I've ever composed in my entire life. From here on, everything else I will compose till I die will be easier. Because the idea of writing over half an hour of music for nothing but metal, metal objects, bell-like objects, is really, really difficult. No strings, no drums, no voices. Uh, one has really got to be incredibly creative in so many different parameters, whether you're dealing with pitch or whether you're dealing with internal rhythm or the momentum of the line, keeping the contrast. I worked really hard so that each of the four movements has a very, very different feeling. One movement is driving and the other one is almost as if the metals were singing the second movement. And then the third one is, is kind of like an odd gamelan from another world called mantra. And so on and so forth. So you have the sense that you're moving through different sound worlds with different kinds of instruments, different pitch fields. Um, all of these things are very normal if you're writing for orchestra, of course, but when you only have metal, it's tough and, and wonderful. And for me, I've learned an enormous amount from the piece because we've been able to collaborate and I've certainly learned a lot from Third Coast Percussion and the, the chance to say, well, let's do this, how about that? And we could sort of go deeper with it and sculpt and sculpt and sculpt and uh, really find a beauty in just nothing but metal. I first came to know anything about John Cage when I was maybe 10 something. I was singing in choir and playing in band and I started to be aware of this John Page person. And I remember a little bit later reading his writings and starting to hear some of his music. So I think it would be fair to say that I've been greatly affected by his work. Of course I would say that also about Mahler or Ravel or Mingus or Ella Fitzgerald and you know lots of people that were in coming into my uh, mind and ear all through my development as a composer. I think for me, the most interesting thing about John Cage is his philosophy. What he said music could be, opening up all the possibilities, the way he thought about sound. Uh, for me, he's really a philosopher and also a composer. And the Third Coast Percussion has recorded many of his works. They've played his works all over and uh, do a fantastic job. So I love those recordings of Cage's music. Um, you asked me, would John Cage like Resounding Earth? I have no idea. I really have no idea. But um, I know that he would enjoy watching and hearing Third Coast play it because it's very virtuosic. I mean, uh, you can get a sense of all the quick changes and mallet changes and uh, hitting the bells in the right place with the right color. I mean, it's difficult and it's half an hour. It's a workout. It's definitely a workout. So I know that it's an engaging piece because of their virtuosity and their grace and their generosity and their uh, sort of understanding of all the metals.